Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am really good, Brian. I woke up this morning, and I'm really happy because it's a Horse Center day. Hey, that's right, Matt. What, what, what could be wrong with a Horse Center day? Matt, uh, I'm always excited to do Horse Center, but I'm also excited about the showdown that's about to go down in Hot Springs, Arkansas, Matt. Of course, I'm talking about the $1 million Apple Blossom Saturday at Oaklawn Park. And we're talking about two of the best females of recent years, Matt. We have Monomoy Girl. We have Swiss Skydiver. It's going to be a showdown. It sure is, Brian. We got a matchup of champions. And in today's world of thoroughbred racing, it's really rare to have that happening in April. It usually only happens in the fall in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, and frankly, Matt, it doesn't happen anywhere near as it used to, uh, as often as it used to. And, and you know, from for my money, Matt, I know the NTRA poll would say different with Mystic Guide and with uh, Charlatan one two on the list. But for my money, these are the two best horses in training. Monomoid Girls proved it for four years running now, Matt. And Swiss Skydiver, I mean, she's just done it by racing every month against good competition and doing well. Matt, Monomoid Girl, she just refuses to lose. She's a two-time champion on a Breeders' Cup Distop winner two times over, Matt. And the only meeting they had, she was, of course, the winner. Yeah, that meeting, of course, Brian, happened in the Breeders' Cup disc staff uh, this past year, and, and it really didn't turn out to be much of a meeting because uh, Swiss Skydiver had such a terrible start that she really lost all chance, so we can't really make a judgment about, you know, head-to-head -head, uh, with these two great uh, uh, females from from that race, but you know, hey, uh, Monomoy Girl, uh, 16 starts over the years, has you know had to overcome you know a lot of hiccups and health problems and things. But bottom line, Brian, 16 starts, 14 victories, and two second places. And of course, one of those was early on in her career, and the other one came um, in the Cotillion uh, when Monomoy Girl was disqualified. She just wins and wins and keeps on winning. All she does is win, Matt. And yeah, forget that 14 to 16 junk. She's 15 to 16. Well, the Cotillion may have been a, uh, a, a reasonable disqualification when she uh, was taken down behind Midnight Pursue in, the, in that race at Parks a few years ago. But yeah, she hasn't, she hasn't been headed to the wire since her two-year-old season. And, you know, she, she usually doesn't win by open lengths, but uh like she did in her return, she just makes it look pretty easy. I think from a tactical standpoint, Matt, uh, she might have the advantage in that she's outside. Florent Giroux will have the option of seeing her rival and the other speed in the race will be a clear third choice, Latruska, on her inside. So maybe that's an advantage, but she looked good. Uh, she looked good enough uh, in her six-year-old debut. It came at Oakland Park in the Bayacoa, and she's five for five now since that long layoff. Yeah, Brian, and you know, what's interesting also uh, is that both of these horses have run at Oaklawn Park a total of once each, and they both have victories at Oaklawn Park. Um, of course, uh, as you mentioned, um, Monomoy Girls came uh, uh, most recently in her last start. And I don't know, Brian, I just, I just don't see how there's any way that you can separate these two handicapping wise. Um, how, do, how do you pick one over the other? Yeah, well, Monomoy Girl, like we said, she's finished first in 15 out of 16. She's won two Breeders' Cups. I think she deserves to be the favorite. She won their only meeting. But as you said, of course, with Skydiver, not only stumbled badly at the start and, and, and moved up nicely before fading out, but she came out uh, pretty banged up from that rough start she had in the Breeders' Cup distaff. So I think this is going to be a totally different race than we unfortunately saw in the Breeders' Cup distaff. Swiss Skydivers, for real. She proved that, of course, Matt, in that Preakness win, which I thought was the race of the year in 2020. And for that three-year-old filly to, uh, to beat uh, pretty much in, a, in a, a stretch long battle, beat Authentic, the male champion in the Preakness, nothing but impressive. 
absolutely, Brian. And, and we've talked about it before on the show, how she tes- t- she took her uh, game on the road all last year, winning big races all over the country, on the East Coast, on the West Coast, in the center of America. And, and, and that's not easy to do. And it is so rare these days that you have to have so much respect for the Kenny McPeak runner. Yeah, absolutely. She's uh, she's won six graded stakes in about the last 12 months, um, and she's been second in other big races. Uh, I thought her return also was very good. In fact, of the two, I would say the Swiss skydiver was a little bit more impressive when she went out to California, Matt, and uh, pretty much dominated the uh, uh, Beholder Mile, the grade one Beholder Mile out at Santa Anita. So she looks like she's in great form. She's working great. McPeak is saying how well she's doing. I thought Monomoy Girl looked really good in her recent work over the track. She moved from Fairgrounds to Oakland Park, worked with Owendale, a very nice male, and looked really good. Uh, there as well so these are the two in the apple blossom not there's no doubt about it but I mentioned Latruska uh, briefly there's there there is four other horses Latruska is very good started her career in Mexico City has proven herself here in America she has plenty of speed and she ran a good race last time to just miss against she shares the devil in the local prep for this race she shares the devil is, is going to run a Churchill down, so she's not here. But another Brad Cox uh, trained horse, of course, he trains Monomoy Girl. He's got uh, get rid of what ails you. And, and this is a pretty talented, lightly raised five-year-old daughter of Ghost Zapper, Matt, who looks to be getting better by the start. Latruska is very good. I think get rid of what ails you is, is getting very good. Do either of them have a prayer in this showdown in the Alpha Blossom? No, I don't think so, Brian. I I think it's very hard or, or impossible to think of a scenario where either Monomoy Girl or Swiss Skydiver is are not the winner of this race. I guess something could happen and, and they don't run one, two. And and if that's the case, then we're talking about uh probably making a choice between Latrushka, who herself <laughs> has 12 wins and 17 starts and uh, get rid of what ails you. Yeah. Yeah. Two nice, uh, two nice kind of second secondary horses, if you will, of the other six in the apple blossom that I expect Latruska to, to maybe go for the lead Swiss skydivers on her inside though. So she probably wants to either stay really close to the lead or, or, or she can drop down to the rail as she's done successfully before Monomoy girl, I expect her to be sitting in third early and just kind of watching from the outside to see what those top two do and when to move. Florence Roux obviously knows Monomoy girl very well, having ridden her in all of these races, Matt. It's time to make a pick in this showdown. I, I, it, it, for me, it's not really a great betting race, Matt. I, I, just, I just love the sport and I love seeing two horses like this win, uh, run against each other. I think it's great for the sport. I also think that the winner of this is the best horse in America. Forget Mystic Guide, forget Charlatan. They're good males, but these two females just prove it all the time. And I want to see them run and it's going to be a good race. Who's your pick? Hey, Brian, I've been a fan of Monomoy Girl throughout her career. And and like you said, all she does is win. So for that reason, I have to make Monomoy Girl my top choice and my long shot pick will be Latrushka. Yeah, okay. So Matt, I, I think Monomoy Girl should be favored in here. She deserves to be favored, as we've said. And uh, there's absolutely no way we can take anything away. I just have a feeling that Swiss Skydiver is getting even better. And, and uh, having seen her run all these hard races last year, that's saying a lot. Um, Monomoy Girl is six. Uh, she could be better than ever. She could be as good as ever. She could be even better than ever. But I'm going to go for the younger horse in here, Matt. I, I'm going to pick a very, very <laughs> mild upset. Uh, I, I think I put them at four to five and six to five. But I'm going to go with Swiss Skydiver. Uh, I think what we're going to see, though, might be along the lines of that Beholder Songbird Breeders' Cup distaff from uh, several years ago, and that would not be fun. My long shot will be the horse who can rally past Latruska for third, and that's get rid of what ails you. Uh, I think Latruska is a nice mare coming and a good story coming from Mexico City, but I, I just have a feeling the other two 
big ones are going to pressure her a little bit early for her liking in the apple blossom. What a race. Speaking of uh, races at Oakland Park, though, Matt, there was a pretty big upset last week in the Arkansas Derby. Superstock was your long shot, wasn't he? Hey, Brian, Superstock was your long shot, wasn't he? Yeah, I guess that's true, Matt. Although, honestly, I'm not going to take much credit for that pick because I really did expect Concert Tour to win. I thought Cattle River might give him more trouble early, and I guess he did, but uh, kind of a disappointing effort from our top pick, Concert Tour. Uh, that's for sure, Brian. And, and I, when the, the race finished and and Superstock uh, turned out to be the winner at, at, at decent odds. I, I just, I, I just was not happy for myself. I was a little giddy in this show about the prospects of concert tour, and and I don't know, it, it just wasn't like me uh, to to make that pick. And I guess I paid the price for it. Um, I'll tell you, Brian. Uh, yep, Cata River went out there and set the pace, and. and concert tour was sitting and it looked like in perfect position throughout and, and turning for home it, it looked like uh, a concert tour was set up to to go right by and win the race but quite frankly he just didn't fire well here's here's what i said before the race and i, I think part of this was was born out in the race matt is that cattle river is a very talented horse and they ran very fast early I, I still wouldn't give up on either Caddo River or Concert Tour. And, and this is a conversation we've had before. I, I don't think that, I think people jump off horses nowadays too early from one result. So I'm not ready to say that Concert Tour can't win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Caddo River, I, I always worried about 10 furlongs. And, you know, if he goes into Kentucky Derby, I think he'll be a pace factor, but I, I really don't like his chances. But I could see Concert Tour bouncing back with, with this added experience. Don't forget they ran very fast early. Superstock, on the other hand, 12 to 1. Yeah, he picked up the pieces and he was the beneficiary of that fast pace mount. I think that's why he won. Going forward in the Kentucky Derby, do you like any of the three? Well, uh, no doubt that Superstock got the ultimate perfect trip, not, not only the right pace setup, but a ground saving trip to sneaking through on the rail. Everything went the way of Superstock. That is not to say that Superstock isn't a nice horse and, and has a chance to win some races the rest of the year. And maybe one of those ones that we see winning a handful of those mid-major derbies um, later in the summer and in the fall. Do I like him? Uh, in the Kentucky Derby, not particularly considering uh, what we've just said about getting a getting the ideal trip. Yeah, and I I have to agree with you, Matt. Uh, Superstock, this this was this was his race. This is a, hey, it was a million dollar race. Yeah. He's a he's a winner of a million dollar race now. But I agree with you. I think the distance, the pace set up, everything set up for him, and the trip. Of course, it was a beautiful ride and. Uh, a nice win for a 12 to one shot, but yeah, I'm not quite ready to jump on him in the Kentucky Derby concert tour of the three. I still like him best going forward in the, for the Kentucky Derby, but he'll certainly have to run better. I don't think he'll have to chase a 22 in the Kentucky Derby like he did here. Maybe he improves. Maybe he doesn't. Baffert's been a little noncommittal. Uh, Cattle River, I think is a talented horse, but I just don't like him at 10 furlongs. I think he's got good things in his future as well, Matt. All right, so we talked about the Apple Blossom and the Arkansas Derby. I thought this show was supposed to be a Kentucky Oaks top 10 show, Matt. Let's do that now. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's let's get our top 10 fillies. Okay, we're going to start with number one, Matt, and she is a filly by Frosted. You know I love Frosted. This is Travel Column. Travel Column was an impressive winner for trainer Brad Cox in the Fairground Oaks, easily defeating her rival Clarier, Matt. Right, and uh, we've talked about Travel Column and Clarier a few times this year, and and uh, you know the last time I think we talked about the Oaks Phillies, those two were way ahead of the rest of the horses that we mentioned. Um, I don't know if there's that big a gap um, now 
as we go through our top 10. But yeah, travel column is now ahead two to one in the head to head matchups with Clarier. Yeah, she's ahead, and I think she's a deserving favorite. I can't get out of my head, Matt, what she did last time when she was at Churchill Downs because that golden rod, she had all kinds of trouble, and it was an impressive win over Clarier, who was only making her second start of her life. But uh, travel column looked good last year at Churchill Downs, and she looked great last time in the Fairground Oaks. Having said that, Clarier is still number two on our list, Matt, the daughter of Curlin. Very well-bred daughter of Curlin for trainer Steve Asmussen, Matt, was, uh, you know, not close to beating Travel Column in the Fairground Oaks, but I also don't think the trip or the pace set up for her that day. Yeah, lightly raced, as we talked about, with the fantastic breeding um, and, and has basically been competing against Travel Column, who... Uh, we have had at number one throughout the year. Uh, um, no reason to, to, as you've talked about, when a horse takes a loss, no reason to knock Clarier uh, with uh, a defeat to travel column. She, she, in my view, can only get better. Right. And, and nine furlongs at Churchill Town should be right up Clarier's uh, alley. She'll also have more pace to work with than she did in the Fairground Oaks. I think Clarier now will not be heavily bet in the Kentucky Oaks. I mean, she could fall to the third, the fourth choice even here. So she's a horse I'm very interested in betting in the Kentucky Oaks, actually. The number three on a horse in the list, Matt, is a horse we've been waiting for for a while. Of course, we knew about her last year as a two-year-old, another really well-bred daughter of Curlin. This one trained by Todd Pletcher. Malathot was everything that we were waiting for when she came back in the recent Ashland at Keeneland. Yeah, and, and Todd Pletcher likes this horse a lot. Just the other day, he said that Malathot has been a very good horse throughout her career. Since he first set eyes on her, he knew that she was really good. And Todd doesn't usually say things like that uh, about his uh, horses. But she's four for four now and made a nice run uh, to get the win in the Ashland in her 2021 debut and she should only move ahead with that really good performance under her belt. Yeah, we were waiting for her because she'd been away since winning the Demoiselle last fall at Aqueduct in similar style where she really uh, came with a late rush as she did in this Ashland to get a very game past the Champagne. I thought it was a great performance. Uh, I'm going to say something weird. I, I almost would like this filly going to the Kentucky Derby the way she clearly wants a distance in the way she can finish off these races. I'm actually a little bit worried in the Kentucky Oaks that if she lets too many of these good horses get the jump on her, she could have some trouble picking them up. As you said, though, she could improve second race out. I just want to see her make her move a little bit earlier than she has in her last two wins. I know she's not ready for the Kentucky Derby with only one start. I'm really saying that she's a 10 furlong horse, though, so it'll be interesting what she does second time out of the year in the Kentucky Oaks. Another undefeated filly we have at number four, Matt, a daughter of Flatter. Her name is Search Results. Of course, she's trained by Chad Brown. She's had all three of her starts this year, one at Gulfstream Park, two at Aqueduct. She's won her last two stakes at Aqueduct, and she made the gazelle look pretty easy. She did make it look easy, three for three now. And let's remember... Uh, that it actually came up in the discussion of the Wood Memorial, people poking holes in the horses in the wood because they said that uh, a Bourbonic ran slower than the Phillies on that day. Well, let's turn that around and make that a positive here for search results and say, hey, she ran faster on that day than the guys did in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if that's saying a ton, Matt, but uh, she did run a little faster than the uh, Wood Memorial boys did, and she did it very easily, as we said. Now, the pace was not fast. I think that was to her advantage in the Gazelle. So we'll see the horse that she beat uh, pretty easily in the Gazelle later on down the list. But so far, so good for search results. Uh, she'll be one of many who, uh, who look to be at least involved in the pace early in this Kentucky Oaks. And she, as they say, could be any kind for trainer Chad Brown. Another lightly raced filly on our list here, Matt, is past the Champagne. And she almost impressed me more than search results in her third lifetime race. She only had the two sprints going in. She faced a really, really good horse in her first where she finished second. And she won impressively, but both were sprinting. 
She's in the George Weaver barn as of the last two starts. And I think this daughter, also a flatter, uh, could be a good one. She ran a good race in the Ashland, Matt. Yeah, it's interesting that we have uh, two daughters of Flatter in a row in our uh, in our top ten. Not a high profile sire, but certainly one that uh, has produced some really good horses. Yeah, and and moving up uh, into a race like the Ashland against the Quality Field, she looked really good. I mean, she she had the lead coming down the stretch and looked like a winner, but. Uh, uh, Malathot was a little bit better and and got by her uh, by a head. So again, uh, uh, losing to a horse like Malathot is strictly a feather in her cap. Yeah, and especially after two sprints. You mentioned Flatter. He's not a sire I usually think of. The nine furlongs are up, so it'll be interesting to see if search results and past the champagne are true nine furlong or more horses. But uh, uh, both of them with three starts look very good to this point. Malafat had to run huge to catch past the champagne in the Ashland. Number six on our list, Matt, another really well-bred horse. This is a daughter of Tappet. Her name is Pauline's Pearl. Comes from that great breeding program for Stone Street Farm, Matt. She's a daughter of Hot Dixie Chick, who you remember was a really good sprinter. So she's got kind of a mix there. Tappet distance, Hot Dixie, hot Dixie Chick kind of a one-turn horse. She comes off a win at Oakland Park in the fantasy. Yeah, Steve Asmussen teaming up with uh, a Stone Street Philly. I think that combination has done some really, really great things uh, in the past with horses like uh, Rachel Alexandra and my Miss Aurelia. Uh, but right, like you said, first uh, in uh, fantasy, she was second in the Honey Bee. Um, nothing but quality here and and uh you're talking about quite a list in this oaks top 10 but uh pauline's pearl a terrifically bred horse that's already got some got some big wins yeah yeah the fantasy was nice but the fantasy i think was a cut below a few of the others we've talked about certainly the top three for sure so i think she'll need to improve the good news is without breeding uh, and, and her progression in her form. She is getting better. She she looms a uh, kind of a dark horse and, and sounds odd to say with that breeding and her improving record, but I think there's just so many good horses in this Kentucky Oaks that she's another one that could be slightly forgotten. Maybe she's getting good. Maybe she's getting good enough to really threaten in the Kentucky Oaks. Number seven on our list, Matt, lucky number seven, is a horse that beat Pauline's Pearl previously in the Honey Bee, but she went to Keeneland for her last start where maybe the short stretch and being a little too far out of it was not her bag as she was well beaten third behind two good fillies that we've already mentioned in the Ashland last time. Yeah, Will Secret, a daughter of Will, Will Take Charge for Dallas Stewart, uh, certainly uh, has an affinity for Oaklawn Park with two stakes wins there in the Honey Bee and the Martha Washington. So, um, you know, she left a track that she clearly likes. And as you mentioned, went into a tougher spot in the Ashland uh, at, at Keeneland um, still another very nice filly. Yeah, and, and, and she's a horse I think will be forgotten on the odds board in the Kentucky Oaks with all these horses to bet. She's a horse I'm looking for as a long shot in my exotics because I think she's a little bit better than we got to see in the Ashland. Short stretch, not a ton of pace in there. It just goes to show how impressive Malathot was for running down past the Champagne. Will Secret was never going to get them. But I think the Kentucky Oaks with more pace, uh, a different racetrack, a different uh, length of stretch could be a good thing for Will Secret. Uh, John Court thought that uh, Churchill would be a good thing for Will Secret. She's going to be my long shot. I'll tell you that right now for the Kentucky Oaks. Matt, it's almost crazy that we have to go down all the way to number eight before we touch on crazy beautiful because she looked just beautiful, the daughter of Liam's map when she won the Gulfstream Park Oaks last time. Absolutely, Brian. Gulfstream Park Oaks winner uh, after running second in the Devona Dale, also at Gulfstream Park for Kenny McPeak. Of course, we talked about Kenny McPeak and the great Philly Swiss skydiver uh, earlier. A little bit unusual for Kenny McPeak, and I saw him talking the other day and kind of uh, uh, joking about it uh, and an unusually high yearling purchase price of $250,000 uh, 
uh, for McPeak, who has gotten that uh, great reputation of finding uh, fantastic horses for bargain basement prices. Yeah, Swiss Skydiver wasn't nearly the price that Crazy Beautiful was when Kenny McPeak uh, found her at the yearling sale. Crazy Beautiful, I'll tell you what, here's what I don't like about Crazy Beautiful, and this is why I guess she fell all the way down to number eight on our list. She had chances last year in stakes races, including the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, and she did not come through uh, quite as well. She was sacking in a couple and then a little farther back in the Breeders' Cup. But I tell you what, uh, Swiss Skydiver really turned a quarter this time last year. Now, she was a little bit more lightly raced than Crazy Beautiful as a juvenile. But Crazy Beautiful's two races this year where she rallied for second be behind a uh, monster performance by Hall Bodemeister. And then coming back and coming from last to weave through traffic and just decimate the field in the Gulfstream Park Oaks makes me think she is indeed getting better and she is a threat for trainer Kenny McPeak, who ran second last year in the Kentucky Oaks with Swiss Skydiver. Talk about uh, good horses that are kind of far down our list, Matt. What has Soothsay done wrong? Well, she's only run two races for trainer Richard Mandela, but the daughter of distorted humor is coming off a Santa Anita Oaks win. And interesting, Brian, this is our lone West Coast horse in this Kentucky Oaks top 10. And you're right, uh, 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 two for two, a big win in the Santa Anita Oaks, distorted humor, uh, great Claiborne Farms and, and uh, Dill Schneider bloodlines. Um, Richard Mandela, um, you know, he'll take his time with a horse and, and send them to the track when they're ready. So uh, Soothsay could be one that's uh, got some upside. Yeah, I think she certainly does have some upside. I think she might be up against it in a deep Kentucky Oaks field and only her third start. But, uh, you know, the rail opened up. She came through. She made a nice move in that Santa Anita Oaks. And then she, she was game to put away beautiful gift in there. So she's obviously a horse. She's got pedigree. She's got uh, a great trainer uh, behind her. But it's a lot to ask. But she is a talented filly. Number 10 on our list, Matt, I think is another long shot. Uh, she'll probably have pretty big odds in the Kentucky Oaks. Her name is Maracuja. And Maracuja is the daughter of Honor Code, who only sprinted in her first three starts, it took her three races to win her maiden, uh, but she was second to search results last time in the Gazelle. Yeah, and she was not only second to uh, search results in that race, she was well ahead the re of the rest of the field in that race, uh, uh, indicating that, you know, uh, she's got some quality there. Trained by uh, uh, Rob Atris, a relatively newcomer uh, and a regular on the circuit in New York not known for having stakes horses like this, uh, 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 wins a lot of races in the claiming ranks, uh, uh, claiming horses, improving for them. And, and, and he learned his trade under uh, trainer Robertino Diodoro. Yeah. And, and you said she was much uh, the best of the rest, second best, clearly ahead of the rest in the Gazelle. I'll add that there was a lack of pace, and this is a filly who wants to rally. So much like Will Secret or a few others in here, I think she'll get a better pace in the Kentucky Oaks if she can run even a better race second time around two turns. The daughter of Honor Code could make some noise as a long shot. Matt, this list is so good. There's so many good options for the Kentucky Oaks that we didn't even get to mention. Beautiful gift who was a nice winner of the Santa Isabel two starts back and was a good second behind Suse last year. It's a pretty deep list. It really is, Brian. And only, you know, maybe only one of them is going to win the Kentucky Oaks, but there's a lot of big races for three-year-old fillies that horses in this top 10 are going to win. That's right. That's right. The Kentucky Oaks is a nice race. I'm really looking forward to it. Of course, April 30, the day before the Kentucky Derby. Friday is a holiday here in Louisville, so we're looking forward to the Kentucky Oaks. Hey, folks, if you like what you're seeing here, please hit that subscribe button. We uh, really do appreciate it. You can hit that little red button for our uh, Horse Racing Nation on the YouTube channel here, and uh, that is uh, going to push us off to last week's picks, Matt. I guess we already talked about it because we only had one race to pick last week. It was the Arkansas Derby, and, and our producer, Tony Badabing, is going to show the results, Matt. I, are you taking this as a win for when, when he flashes the results here? 
Well, Brian, I'm taking it at that I'm happy that some of the horse center regulars in the comment, se comment section mentioned that they used uh, um, the long shot winner in the Arkansas Derby and cast some nice tickets. Um, for myself personally, I guess I'm a little disappointed that I, uh, I didn't benefit from the fact that we had uh, uh, picked out the right long shot. Yeah, we picked out the right long shot. That's something. Let's move on to one more race before we call it a show, Matt. We are sticking with Oaklawn Park here. It's also a million-dollar race. It's the Oaklawn Handicap. This one is a 16th of a mile farther than the Apple, Apple Blossom. This one's nine furlongs, grade two for the Oaklawn Handicap. And unlike the two top-heavy monsters that we see in the Apple Blossom, Matt, I think this has several good horses. It's more of a wide-open field. Let's start with Express Train who has been very good for trainer John Sheriffs. The son of Union Rags had a long layoff uh, well into his three-year-old year, but he's come back good and he's looked very good so far as a four-year-old. Uh, certainly has. Uh, has a nice win uh, in the San Pascal, a grade two. And then in the big cap, um, finished second uh, for John Sheriffs, the son of Union Rags is gonna have to uh, uh, ship out of California which uh, Sheriff's doesn't do that often. Right, Sheriff's doesn't do it often, but he does it with good horses. And this is a horse who I think is the form of the race. I think his, even if you go back three races where he was second to uh, Charlatan in the grade one Malibu, I think his last three races for me make him the horse to beat in here. It's a matter of taking his game away from Southern California to Oaklawn Park here in the Oaklawn Park Handicap. A uh, horse I know you like a little bit, Matt, is that Todd Pletcher trainee, Fearless, who's kind of had a checkered, lightly race career to this point, but he's coming off a nice win last time at Gulfstream Park. That's for sure, Brian, and why not hitch my wagon up to uh, one of the hottest trainers in the country in Todd Pletcher and, and this MO of uh, being patient with horses um, and for Fearless he had not been seen since June of 2020 and came back to win that Gulfstream Park mile in February, impressively. And now Pletcher's given him time uh, heading to this Oaklawn Handicap, million dollar purse, son of Ghost Zapper. Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe this horse um, is ready to show his stuff. Yeah, ready to show his stuff is certainly a possibility for Fearless in the Oakland Handicap. The one thing I don't like about him is because I was looking for him to show his stuff a little bit last year. And the two races against good horses that I saw last year, the New Orleans Classic and then the Stephen Foster, he was disappointing. Uh, maybe he just needed a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more time. He looked good, but he's looked good before. Maybe the last one was his best yet. Maybe he's ready to finally break the threshold. But I, I worry just a little bit about those two uh, tries last year against good competition. Another horse I've liked for a while, Matt, is Silver State. You remember early on the Kentucky Derby Trail last year, he was a horse that we talked about quite a bit in Louisiana. He didn't get quite get it done, but after a layoff, he's come back good. In fact, he's won four in a row, two straight stakes at Oakland Park. Yeah, Brian, I kind of feel like uh, when I'm looking at this field for the Oakland Handicap that uh, I should use a line from the, the great movie Casablanca where they said, round up the usual suspects. I kind of feel like some of the horses in this field fit that uh, category. Uh, yeah, a, a silver state, four wins in a row. Uh, uh, and, and that's impressive. Uh, uh, a nice win in the Essex uh, by a, by a neck and then a nose win in the fifth season, also at Oaklawn Park. Um, hard spun son of Steve Asmussen. I don't know, Brian, how many races is this horse going to keep winning in a row and at likely short odds? Yeah, well, I think he might be the third choice in here, so I don't think it'll be too low, but um, he's an interesting horse because he just couldn't quite get over the hump. But I said that about Fearless. And hey, this horse had a couple shots last year in those three-year-old derby preps at Louisiana and couldn't do it. 
He's been winning by narrow margins against a little bit lesser competition. So uh, he's going to have to improve. It wouldn't surprise me if he did. I think he still is a horse uh, of some ability. But uh, interesting to see. This will be the acid test again for Silver State. Owendale's always there, Matt. Owendale is always running hard. He's always trying. If there's no pace, he's close to the lead. If there is pace, uh, he's farther back. He, he, he hasn't won much over the last year or two, but he often rallies into the picture or is close to the pace uh, and, and is in the picture. Brad Cox trains into mischief. Maybe this is the spot. Nine furlongs at Oakland Park. Maybe this is the spot for Oakland, Owendale to get another win. Or, or at least uh, get another big check in this million dollar races. Second in the New Orleans handicap when he had the lead. Third in the Razorback. Third in the Clark. Lots of quality finishes in here, Brian. But um, I just can't uh, uh, get excited about him as a win contender. Yeah, I, I do think he's a win contender. But I, on the other hand, I guess a, a bunch in here are win contenders. Uh, hey, the, the, I, I, I like the son of Into Mischief. I know he doesn't win a lot, but he runs a lot of good races. He's got an entry maiden here who should show some speed. So maybe he can come from a little farther off the pace. I certainly wouldn't throw out Owen Dale from any of the top spots here. The speed I mentioned from the also from the Brad Cox barn, Matt, is Warriors Charge. And Warriors Charge kind of disappointed late last year. But he's run some very good races on the lead. I don't see a ton of speed in here. I think he's going to be the horse on the lead, in fact. And uh, he'll have to improve off his one race this year and, and his last couple of races last year. But I see some races in his form where, hey, if he runs like that on the lead alone in this Oakland Park handicap, I think he's a dangerous horse. Yeah, and I think you're referring to, uh, you know, some back races that uh... – this son of Munnings has had when he, where he was second in the Islin at Monmouth Park and was the winner of the Razorback handicap in 2020. Yeah, well, he was second in this race last year and he ran a good Preakness, in fact, a, a couple of years ago. So he'll be my long shot in here, Matt. My top pick in this race, it, it's, it's, uh, it's close between a few, but I'm going to go with Express Train. I think his recent form is good enough where I think he can get the job done as long as he ships to Arkansas well. But my long shot pick will be Warriors Charge on the lead. Wow, Brian, uh, going with the chalk from California. Little, maybe I'm a little surprised. I can't. Uh, I can't go with uh, a favorite like Express Train coming shipping from California to Oaklawn Park. Uh, he could well win, but that's not the kind of favorite that I want to be betting. Fearless will be my top choice, and and I'm gonna I'm going with a big long shot. I'm going to you say rated R superstar um, who was claimed a couple races back for $50,000, but maybe this new trainer um, has figured something out with the horse because he had a nice second place finish in the Essex uh, at Oak Lawn Park. Yeah, he sure did. And, 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 and we've seen horses really turn it around off the claim in recent years. CZ Rocket comes to mind uh, immediately for me. So, yeah, I've just seen Rated R Superstore so much over the last three or four years that I can't uh, jump on his bandwagon now. But you're right. Maybe maybe he's turning things around since the claim. Interesting. All right, folks, that's our show. It was a jam-packed show. I hope you enjoyed it. Matt, before we go, we need a parting shot from you, my friend. Wow, that was an exciting show, Brian. We covered a lot of territory. And we have got our Kentucky Derby shows coming up, folks. So please stay with us on Horse Center. And of course, I want to thank our new producer, our great producer, Tony Bada Bing, for all the beautiful graphics and new look of Horse Center. Wow, great. You called Tony Bada Bing great, Matt. I, maybe he's ready for the Hall of Fame. I don't know. Yeah, we appreciate Tony jumping in, doing all this for us. We appreciate it. We appreciate Candace Curtis for her uh, race graphics uh, each and every week. We also appreciate Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. But most of all, folks, we appreciate you tuning in. Like Matt said, we will have a oodle, a bundle, a lot of Kentucky Derby talk the next few weeks as we get closer to that first Saturday in May. We'll see you right here next week on Horse Center.